What's going on guys? Thank you so much for joining. And first of all, I wanted to say thank you to the 236 people who have subscribed to this channel. You have helped me out tremendously. Um, all of your comments and your feedback are amazing. And that is what this video is going to be about. I've taken the most asked questions and I'm going to be answering them in this video. Most of the questions that are asked are all about our live streaming equipment and what we use and how it's set up. So please stick around and I'll get through all of that with you. The first thing I want to show you is our soundboard. We use an Allen & Heath SQ6 48 channel 36 bus digital mixer. One of the coolest things about the soundboard is that there are 12 individual stereo mixes. For example, one of our stereo mixes is designated to our live streaming service, which is accessible from a mobile device or a tablet through the SQ app. From there, we are connected to a Focusrite Scarlett Solo audio interface that is connected to our laptop via USB. I'll talk more about the laptop in just a bit but this allows us to monitor and adjust the audio from the live stream. We monitor the audio through some Audio-Technica ATH M30Xs, which are really great headphones, very crisp and clear sound. Now, as some of you know, for our video feeds, we use an SMTAV PTZ camera, and you've probably seen this in previous videos. This is the HD30 model, which is 30X optical zoom. This camera features a one inch uh, Panasonic sensor, which provides very high quality images. Um, this is the same sensor that's provided in most big brand PTZ cameras. So if you're looking for quality without hurting the bank, this is the way to go. Uh, this camera is currently, I actually prefer it to be over our second camera, which is the Canon HF G50. That's a Canon Vixia HF G50. This camera boasts 4K capabilities, but it's actually only able to record at 4K. For live streaming purposes, this camera can give you a clean HDMI out in 1080p. Personally, I'm looking forward to changing this camera out with another PTZ camera. There's a new company that has emerged and they are, as of right now, about $200 less expensive than what the, uh, the SMTAV is now offering. Now, I have yet to mount the SMTAV PTZ camera. However, our Canon sits on a Magnus VT4000 fluid head tripod, and it's actually really good if I need to pan and tilt during our live streaming services. I also, for focus, power, and zooming in and out, I use this remote here. I'll link that below in the description. Like I said, this is a good camera, but I personally prefer the SMTAV over this Canon HF G50. This camera may do better in up close, higher lighting situations, but eventually I will change it out. Um, it gets really good quality. It's just not up to par and doesn't meet the expectations that I had. Now, both cameras are connected to our laptop with only video capture cards. I know, most people tell me that you must have a video switcher like the ATEM Mini in order to operate more than one camera. That is actually not true. I'll tell you about that in just a second. But one of our capture cards is an Elgato CamLink, and the other is some cheap $20 knockoff that I got on Amazon. Uh, to be clear, there is a difference. I have had no interruptions or freezing or disconnections of any kind with the Elgato CamLink. On the other hand, I occasionally have some issues with the cheaper model. In my opinion, spend a little bit more money if you can avoid these issues. So how do I get both cameras to work? The way that it's been working for me is with the help of a USB-C hub. One of the capture cards is plugged directly into the laptop and the other is plugged into the USB-C hub. I also have another monitor hooked up through the USB-C hub via HDMI, and I have had no problems whatsoever running two cameras. Up next is our laptop. We use the Asus A15 Tough Gaming Laptop. It has a 15.6 inch LCD display, six gigabytes of dedicated video RAM. The CPU is AMD R7 4800H, a 512 gigabytes SSD and one terabyte uh, hard drive, it's DDR4, 16 gigs of RAM. I wish there were more USB ports, but at least there is a USB-C port that allows us to use this USB-C hub for faster transfer and more port capability. All right, let's go ahead and power some other stuff on here. We'll give you a look into what this looks like. Um, power the PTZ camera on, and when it comes on, you'll see that it's gonna kind of do its little cycle 
and then spin back around just to a default home setting. So this is our setup. This is kind of what it looks like on Sunday. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put our other display up on this screen. This is really just so our sound people and pro presenter operator can, can view the screen and make sure nothing looks out of whack or out of place. Here's an overview of kind of what it looks like just from standing up behind the desk. One of the other questions was, can the SMTAV PTZ camera rotate 180 degrees? The answer is sort of. Um, it does actually 170 degrees. Another thing is somebody wanted to see the lens um, and the focus and zoom work up close. I'm not sure why, but here it is. Some people were asking how we control this camera and right now I'm just using the controller that it came with. Eventually I will be setting up a left tech controller. So be on the lookout for that video. Here is a sample of the video footage and quality from the SMTAV camera. I will show you the autofocus feature. It does pretty well. It's not as responsive as a mirrorless camera or a DSLR, but it is very fast, I, in my opinion, for a um, church application as well as a PTZ camera. As far as the pan, tilt, and zoom speed, this is the stock speed setting, how it comes right out of the box. I find it to be quick enough for what we do, but you can adjust this speed if you need to. Another question that we had was, how are the color settings? And I find the color settings to be pretty simple. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. You can adjust your iris here. Um, and you know that's obviously going to change like the blurriness of the background of, uh, behind your image you've got your shutter speed um, that's pretty typical you're going to want your shutter speed double your frame rate so if you're doing 30 frames per second obviously your shutter speed should be one over 60. and i would just recommend going through all of these different settings and fine-tuning them to um, work with what current cameras that you have I have found that SMTAV, they do have a very uh, comprehensive color setting arrangement and you are able to really kind of dial in your color, um, try and match it as best as possible to the cameras that you have. Now the Sony Vixia HFG50, um, I did find that the color settings are a little bit different of course because they're completely different brands. and it takes some time i'm going to tell you it does take some time to get these two cameras to match colors exactly but i would recommend getting a color chart and i would uh, i'll link that down below so that you guys can pick one of those up and we had a couple other questions um one of them being where can i get this camera now and i'm going to link below um, where you can get this camera on amazon i prefer going through amazon especially when you're going through um companies like SMTAV. If you look at their website, and this kind of goes into the second question that I haven't touched on yet, how is their customer service? So if you look at SMTAV's website, you will see that there is not very much information, right? Um, they are based in China. So with that being said, the best place to purchase this camera is on Amazon because you do have that purchase protection through Amazon. So please buy it on Amazon. SMTAV is a very good brand. I have not had anyone, you know, that has come to me and told me that they've had issues with their camera. Um, it, th there have been issues with how the camera has been set up, but not necessarily issues with the camera itself. I do have an email address for SMTAV that I will also put in the description. So that way, if you guys have any problems, you could just shoot them an email and contact customer service immediately. I don't foresee there being any issues with them taking care of their customers, especially since the release of my last video, this first video, I'll put a card up here. But since the release of that video, they have actually ramped up their production and they have really good looking cameras. So like a lot of their cameras are really good looking and I don't foresee this company going down, uh, down the hole anytime soon. Personally, I have recommended these cameras to people through YouTube and they have seen a sales increase of around $30,000. Now I only get a small percentage of that through Amazon, but I wanted to bring that up because people are buying these cameras and they are really good quality. They do take some more time to set up, but 
um, and maybe get familiar with, but they are, they are really good cameras. They, the, they have a Panasonic, um, one inch lens inside of them and it captures a lot of light. Um, they're very professional quality and the gears and motors inside of them are very quiet. You don't hear any of that kind of stuff. Um, even when you're sitting right next to the camera during service, it's not like they're loud and clunky. They've got a beautiful design and I really hope to see them produce more, um, you know, in the future. And I'm looking forward to also getting my hands on their 4k camera. The other question that we had was, can you use some type of software or something where you can remote desktop, um, remote into your computer and actually control your live stream while you're out of town? A lot of people have that problem where they're out of town, out of state, they're on vacations, and it's very hard to find other volunteers to take care of the live streaming while you're gone. The answer to this problem is yes, you can. I will have another video out that will fully detail um, how you can do this. But if you wanna check out the software that I use right now, it's actually called Splashtop. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. And Splashtop is very inexpensive. Uh, it's an annual cost, it's really inexpensive. And um, I think it, you'll find it worth your time to just at least look into it now. So go ahead and check that out down below. And I hope this information uh, has been useful to you. If it has, go ahead and give it a thumbs up so that um, other people can find this video. And the more you guys like it, the more this video gets shown to other people and it really can help out the community. So thank you very much. And don't forget to check out the channel and the rest of the videos that we've created. And I hope that you enjoy. Have a good one.